Hi everyone, it's Callie. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm creating a mushroom terrarium using some Pink Fresh Studio products. And I'm excited to share this process with you. I hope you can pick up a few tips and tricks along the way. The coordinating products I use today include the terrarium die on the left, as well as a mushroom builder set called The Magic Is In You. That set comes with a die as well as coordinating stencils to help you add color. And because these dies come attached together, you don't clip them apart, my biggest tip is to die cut first before stenciling. This is really going to help out with the placement of all of the stencil layers and make sure that when you line up each layer, everything will be stenciled in the correct areas. So if you were to stencil first and then die cut afterward, there's a chance that all those itty bitty stars and sparkles on this stenciled image is not going to die cut correctly and you'll be upset with yourself. I actually started out stenciling first and after my first two layers I was like no I think I'm going to have to start over. So here I am with take two. I'm using my stamp and stencil mat to hold down all those itty bitty pieces. The adhesive on the stamp and stencil mat is going to hold down all of my die cut parts. That way my stencil and die cut pieces don't move while I'm stenciling and adding all of these colors. This first layer is a simple one, it's just the mushroom bases. So I'm using a light brown to add some color and dimension by adding shading on one side of those mushroom stems. Then moving on to the second layer, we're gonna make these mushroom tops super colorful. So I'm using a variety of colors. This large mushroom is gonna be purple and blue. So once I've added the purple, I'll go ahead and add some blue to the top, blending the two colors together. So it's really important here to select colors that blend well together, so adjacent or complementary colors on the color wheel. Then onto the second mushroom, I'm gonna use that same cadet blue and then ink blend it with seafoam ink. So I have a blue teal mushroom here. Then my final mushroom is going to be a red to orange combination. So I'm using cherry ink and then melon ink to blend that out. So if you're interested in these colors, since I'm going through them pretty fast, be sure to check out the description links below where everything will be linked for your convenience and will be listed as well on the coordinating blog post for this video. The third layer for this stencil set adds details to the mushrooms. So I'm using some dark brown for that. And then on the stars and little sparkle elements for this stencil, I'm using yellow ink as well as some residual brown ink from my previous brush to give it a bit of contrast and a bit of highlight. The next two layers are going to be for the foliage, so I'm going to use a few different greens to add a bit of color and interest to the foliage. This first color is Fairway Ink. It's probably my favorite green ink for foliage from Simon Says Stamps Positively Saturated Ink Line. I'm adding a soft blend of color on those. And then for the grounding piece, I wanted to add some green on that to make it look a little bit mossy. And then I'll add some dark at the very bottom. For the veins on the other foliage, I'm gonna use this Sage Ink. And I'll use a heavy hand on that because I know the next layer is going to be the foliage of those veins. So I can use a lighter hand, which which is what I'm going to do first. So I really want those veins to stay standing out and darker so that's why I'm using a lighter hand on this other layer and then we are going back to the previous foliage and going back to the fairway ink and this time applying a heavier hand on those veins. There are some details on the grounding piece so I'm just applying some dark brown on that as well. Last but not least, on this final foliage stem, I'm using Aegean ink, and it's a nice dark teal color, and it just adds a bit of interest and different color to my colorful images here. So that's done. I'm not gonna pop them out just yet. I'm just gonna set them aside and then die cut everything. Here's the terrarium die, and I'm die cutting a frame using that dome first, and then for that dome base, I'm gonna die cut that out of matte gold cardstock. All right, so I have my frame die cut here and I just really wanted the border to be a bit more decorative. So I'm using the dotted scallops cover plate here to add some texture to that frame. So we have this nice dome window and we need to create a background for it. So I'm ink blending some pinks and yellows together to create kind of a coral color towards the center as we blend the two together. To get these two colors to blend together nicely, I am using a very light hand using a larger blending brush since I'm blending a bigger area and then just working in layers. You don't want any harsh lines as you're blending backgrounds like this. 
Then I'll spritz it with some water to give it some texture, and then I'm gonna also splatter it with some white paint. I added a drop of acrylic white paint to an acrylic block here, and then added two spritzes of water to get it to the consistency that I like, and then splattered my panel until I was happy. And then I set that aside while I added foam adhesive to the back of my frame, and then adhered it over my ink blended panel. After attaching that frame to a card base, I can go ahead and create my terrarium. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my gold terrarium base first, and then we can go ahead and pop out all of those images that I ink blended earlier that I set aside so we can start building a little scene. First things first, we gotta adhere that grounding piece into the cloche first at the very bottom. And then I'm gonna add that largest stem to the back and towards the center, and it's gonna be applied directly to the background there. And then for the rest of the pieces, I'm going to arrange where I want them to go and then I'll attach them with some 3D foam squares to give them a bit of dimension and to match the height of our frame. Once all those mushrooms are adhered in place, I can go ahead and use the other decorative foliage to finish up my scene. I have a few of my stems peeking out beyond the dome just a little bit, and that gives it a bit more interest to me, but you can keep it all inside that dome too if you'd like. Now remember there were stars and little sparkles to add to our terrarium too, but before I do that, I wanna stamp and apply my sentiment first. That way I can attach my stars and little sparkle elements around the sentiment. I'm using the Wonderful Sentiment stamp set. There is a coordinating die as well, so it's a really nice set to use for sentiments. And I've embossed that in white over black cardstock. Use some black foam to attach my sentiment. Now we can finish up the card with these little sparkle elements. I'm attaching them directly to the card and frame using a dab of glue. And I think now that it would be really fun to add some stickles or glitter to those sparkle elements as well. Then to add a bit of texture to my mushrooms and foliage, I'm adding some Copic dots to add some texture, and then I'm using a white gel pen to add some highlights and texture throughout as well. And that finishes my mushroom terrarium. I really hope you enjoyed this card and picked up some tips and tricks along the way. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'm gonna link two more videos if you're interested in seeing more videos from me. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Bye everyone.